Greetings, everybody. What's going on? <laughs> okay, so I spent a time with God this morning, and I made I um, wrote down some notes that the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, and something that has been on my that He has put on my heart, especially this whole past year, has been how this political thing. We have to know how to navigate through tough issues because we can't take our eyes off the fact that no matter what condition people are in, what they think, and what they think is right, God is in love with the person. They need deliverance. So... I'm titled this video today, Christocrats versus Democrats. <laughs> so God wants to switch our focus. And, and, you know, there's a lot of kingdom-minded believers that know this and are in intercession for this. But when we get involved in the arguments, the issues, we are actually doing the devil's bidding. Um, I don't know how many times in the scriptures, and feel free to Google this stuff because it's all just at your fingertips, that many times before Jesus healed somebody, it says, and Jesus was moved by compassion. It was the compassion in his heart that moved the Father to heal people. So instead of us being angry at the evil that we see manifesting itself, trying to, and don't be mad at those people. Develop a righteous anger, anger for the demonic spirits that have them held captive. You know, at the end of the day, God is the only one that's fit to judge. We're just called to walk in the power of the love of Christ that was so powerful that he looked at what he went through for us. <laughs> and he did that for the Father. Well, he, you know, he is the Father, however you want to look at that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come together. You say we're two or more are gathered and agree on anything in your name in the name of Jesus, that it will be done by our Father in heaven. And we're asking you, God, we're, we're, we're just in agreement with you that all of those evil strategies that are coming out of these people that are so unaware that they're even doing the enemy's bidding are broken by the power of the blood. Nothing's impossible for God. There's also another scripture that says that our battles are not with flesh and blood. <laughs> Let's just go ahead, right on ahead and look that one up. Because it's something that we got to remind ourselves of daily. Huh? Okay. Hold on, please. This is the difference between walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. If you can come face to face with people that you disagree with and that you know that, that, that really what, they're, what they stand for isn't going to be good for people. You know, if you start feeling irritated like that, remember Ephesians 6.12. <laughs> For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That just, okay, so that right there just opened up a whole new subject. <laughs> There's three heavens. We'll talk about... I, the second heaven is where 
the demonic is swirling around our heads and trying to infiltrate our thought life. And see, and this is what it says. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Okay, there's that realm. And that's the one that God has given us all the tools to bypass that and go straight to the third heaven where he sits on the throne. That's the throne of grace. <laughs> he says, come boldly to the throne of grace and find mercy in your time of need. And you know what Holy Spirit said to me one time when I was reading that? He says, that means don't stop approaching me like you are an unwanted house guest. <laughs> says, you're my precious daughter and you belong here. What do you need? Hey, hey, just saying, he talks, he's so amazing. But anyway, every word that comes out of our mouth is coming into agreement with either heaven or hell. Ouch, ouch. So until God finishes this cleanup process with us, in us, through us, it's kind of best to keep our words few until we know that we have uh, a handle on them. You know, I can, I'm not going to mention any names of people that are high up in our government that Christians are just revolted by them. I mean, just like cannot stand them. What if, what if that's somebody God loves? Look what the Apostle Paul did. He was killing Christians. And he had, let's, we just need to pray for that road to, to Damascus experience for them. And God, we all need a heart circumcision. Make sure you're showing up for that yourself. Yeah. Because that's what holy living is. It's purity at heart where we can actually see somebody that's doing things that we don't like, that we don't agree with, whatever, and just have compassion for them because knowing that they don't even know how much God loves them and who he wants to be for them. Hey, hey. yeah. So, let me look at my more of my notes. Oh, don't constantly... Don't consecrate, don't, yeah, consecrate. Don't concentrate on the issues, but their need for salvation. So you start feeling irritated about something, that's because you got a devil irritating you, and you say, oh no. And then you just release the word over these those people. I speak life. I speak liberty. Um, whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Speak over those people. And soon you'll discover just how happy it starts making you when you become a repellent to the negative. Just let that bounce off. There are so many promises in the Bible that we could apply to those situations that we should never be at a loss for something good to say about something or somebody, no matter what it is. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Oh, and um, to, we need our minds renewed to the mind of Christ. And really, that, that is what this whole process is about. All the pain you go through, the shame, the mistakes, none of it's wasted. Addictions, you know, we talk about sin and addictions. Greed's a sin. Anger. It's not just flesh sins, it's heart sins too. But God is so powerful and complete. Let patience have her perfect work, and you will be complete and lacking in nothing. And somewhere 
after decades of us getting our butts kicked, <laughs> we grow up and we become, it's time to become mature in God. It's okay to be uncomfortable for a day or two to let some of your flesh fizzle out. The stuff that it thinks it needs. When, when you start asking God to help you with that and you start putting forth a little bit of effort, he will give you the power to get through it, but he needs your, our participation in this. We don't have to spout our opinions. Let's spout prayers instead. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your purposes. Jesus, thank you for the blood. God, we give you permission to invade our lives. We need heaven to invade our lives. We're giving you our permission, God. We want your will to be done on earth, just like it is in heaven. There's nothing missing or broken in heaven. And there's not going to be anything more missing or broken in our lives as we partner with you to become better. <laughs> You're the God that heals. You're the God that hopes. You're the God that redeems. You're the God that restores time. You're the God that delivers. All of our hope all of our trust is in you. We love you, God. Amen. <laughs>